In this After Effects tutorial, we're going to composite gunshots from our new short film, Shrouded. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. And if you haven't checked out our short film, Shrouded, yet, I'll provide that link in the description so you can go ahead and watch that. Uh, but in this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on this one shot. And this shot looks like this in the actual film. Okay, we're going to be looking at this two-second shot here and compositing all the bullet hits and muzzle flashes right here in this shot. If you're looking for great prop guns for your action film, I'll go ahead and provide those links in the description of this video for the ones that we use. They were amazing. I've bought a ton of prop guns in the past, uh, and I was skeptical about buying these because they were only $30, uh, but these were probably the best prop guns I've ever bought in because... I didn't have to pull them out of the box and you know respray them or anything. They were just ready to go, and you know they felt realistic. They looked realistic on camera. We were able to get close-up shots, and they are amazing. So I'll provide those links in the description. And before we jump in this tutorial, I also got to give a huge shout out to our collaborator on this project, which is ActionVFX.com. They were able to hook us up with some of these assets that we'll be using in this tutorial today. Now, of course, when you do projects like this that need to have a higher end feel, you're going to want to work with you know high quality stock footage. And Action VFX uh, sells 4K uh, stock footage like explosions, muzzle flashes, uh, you know fireballs, all this great stuff here. And also, if you're on a budget, they also offer some great free assets like bullet shells, which we'll be using, and bullet hole textures. And they also come out, they just came out with a new blood mist, which looks really awesome. So they have a ton of free stuff on here, uh, but their products are absolutely, you know, top of the line, 4K, beautiful, easy to work with. So go ahead and check them out. So, so let's go ahead and jump right into this tutorial. I got our shot right here, and I'm just going to drag this into our film strip down here to create a new composition. And here's our entire shot with uh, nothing on it. So the first thing we're going to do is actually put the muzzle flashes in here. So I'm going to go into my assets over here, and all these are Action VFX uh, stock elements. I'm going to go to our muzzle flashes over here, and if we double click on this, we can kind of see uh, what these look like. So these are just still images, and you know, that's pretty much all you need is one frame for a muzzle flash because it happens so fast. So you got angled muzzle flashes, you got them directly in the front, and you got some directly in the side. And of course, they got some beautiful automatic muzzle flashes for, you know, bigger guns that are in video. So that's always great. Very easy to composite. So let's go ahead and find a nice, you know, front muzzle flash. So we'll do something like, you know, it doesn't really matter. Let's grab this, you know, single front three here, put some on top of our footage. And you see, it already has a transparent layer. We don't have to worry about, you know, keying anything. It looks fantastic. So I'm going to hit S on my keyboard for scale. And I'm going to bring this down. And really what I need to do is find a place where our main character here is shooting her gun. So let's see, we can go back. She's going to shoot like right there. So this is exactly where we want to put this muzzle flash right on top right here. And of course, that's really big. So, you know, maybe what you want to do is put the anchor point. You know, we want to send this right over the barrel of the gun. And then you can come down here and scale it down by a touch, depending on how big you want to be. Now, the one thing we need to work on, you know, since we don't have to create anything from scratch, we are compositors in this situation. So we got to make sure all these elements that we're going to put into this shot today are going to blend. So I'm going to grab our muzzle flash here, go to effect, color correction, curves. Now, of course, we don't really need to blend this so well. I mean, I think this is cool and all, but, you know, maybe I'll bring up the shadows by a touch and then maybe I'll go into, you know, maybe the blue channel here and you know bring that up just by a little bit. Just going to kind of help that blend in there. Maybe go to the green channel. And maybe we'll push that up as well. You know, a little before and after. It's very subtle, but you know, it looks a little, looks like it's blending in with the environment just a little bit more. Um, of course, the muzzle flash. No one's going to be like, "Oh my gosh, that does, that's not blending correctly because it's only one frame." But what we need to do is come back down to the timeline here and trim this up to the end point here, and go to the one frame over and just split the layer and delete it. So just like that, the muzzle flash is on there for one frame. And of course, you might want to variate the size by a little bit. Maybe make it. So putting this one muzzle flash in here, it looks great, but it's not enough. What we need to do is brighten up the area around our actress. So what we're going to do is grab our plate here. I'm going to rename this to uh, plate footage. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer by going up to edit, duplicate. And I'm going to drag in the endpoint right here and go one frame over and go to edit, split layer and delete the new layer. So now we just have this going on here. And what we need to do is select our, you know, new footage here, which I'll rename it to uh, Flash, maybe Flash 1. So let's grab the pen tool and kind of mask around the area of our actress here, because what we're going to do is we're going to brighten up the area, you know, right here is for the muzzle flash. So the muzzle flash is acting as a light source. Then what we're going to do is go up to Effect, Color Correction, Curves, and, 
you know, curve this up by a touch, hit F on your keyboard for mask, feather, and feather this to like maybe 160 or 50 or something like that. And now when she fires her gun, the area around her brightens up because this is a light source. And that looks really good. So that was a very easy muzzle flash. And we want to work on some of, you know, these two muzzle flashes right here. And I'm not going to do muzzle flashes for this entire shot because it'd be really repetitive. But this is something a little bit different because we got some two different angles here. And we need to put a muzzle flash in front of yours truly. And yes, that is me. <laughs> uh, but we'll go ahead and go back to our project. And we'll find some new muzzle flashes. So let's kind of do like a side angle shot. Just kind of show you what we got here. So we come through here. See, that would probably work just fine. So let's go ahead and bring this in. So we're gonna have to hit R on our keyboard for rotation and kind of rotate this kind of in that general area, maybe like that. Hit S on your keyboard for scale. And we just got to put this you know, nicely in place. You know, of course that is way too big. Maybe she's firing a bazooka, I don't know. Uh, but we'll go ahead and put this nicely in place. And maybe we'll scale it down to 10. That might be too small. All right, and we'll zoom in here and nicely put this right in place. And of course what we can do is go to the original muzzle flash, the first muzzle flash, and just copy the curves and paste that right in there so we don't have to recomposite anything. And that looks, you know, generally nice. So, and of course, this is where she's firing her gun. Let's go ahead and set this down to one frame and delete it. And then once again, we need to duplicate the plate footage here, you know, trim this up for one frame, and, you know, we will find another masking point around here. And maybe we'll just do like, we definitely want to, you know, expose around her body a little bit. Maybe we'll just you know, not do so much of the back here, but we'll do something like this. Cool. And then we can come back over to our original plate, copy the, uh, the curves and paste it into our new exposure here. And of course, increase the mask feather. And you know, that's generally how we can do a nice you know, little muzzle flash for that. And now of course, let's work on something a little bit tougher, which is me firing my gun, which I'm firing at the same time, I believe. So let's go ahead and bring in another muzzle flash for me. And I'll just bring in like a front view because all we have to do is put this in front of the gun. Now this is gonna require just a little bit of compositing, but first let's go ahead and make sure that this muzzle flash is you know directly in here and it's gonna look pretty good. So maybe that's how our muzzle flash will come on. So what we need to do is, you know, first off, maybe we'll just do the endpoints here, you know, trim that up. And we need to mask this muzzle flash in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the pen tool and you know really zoom in here. So what we need to do is lock all of our layers except for our muzzle flash right here, turn it off. So now we can kind of see what we're doing, grab the pen tool and we need to kind of just mask, you know, kind of around this gun a little bit and kind of like cover up the places that we don't want the muzzle flash to peek over. So around this gun, obviously cover up the front there, go around my shoulder. Uh, and you know what, that should be good. And we'll go ahead and close this up and we'll set, turn this layer back on and set the mask to subtract. So now, the muzzle flash is directly in front of my body here. It looks great. Of course, we'll hit F on our keyboard for feather. Feather it out just by a touch, so maybe like 13 pixels. And, you know, once again, we'll unlock the layers and we'll copy the actual, you know, color correction and paste that over the new muzzle flash. So it blends in there just a little bit nicely. And you know what? That looks really good. And of course, what we can do is just duplicate this, you know, mask right here. And we can, you know, delete the mask. And we can come here and just kind of mask around my body a little bit to kind of brighten up the shot and boom perfect feather it out okay so we're looking good we got these three shots in here but what we need to do now is make the scene seem a little bit more realistic and i want to add in some bullet casings and i want to add some bullet hits into the wall and show you guys how to do that but first we'll go ahead and do the bullet hits in the wall since i'm really excited i really want to shoot this place up so we'll go into our bullet hole textures and remember this is the free download from vfx the bullet holes and what's great about this they have tons of different you know textures so like you have asphalt bullet shots you have concrete and drywall which we'll be using in this one and you also got shotgun hits as well so if you need a spread that's great so we'll grab like a bullet hole in here and you know put this on top and what we'll do is we'll put this like one frame over and we'll want to put this into the wall so we'll go ahead and scale this down and let's see my let's see my shot since I'm so great at shooting a gun. I'll put this right here in the wall, and we'll definitely need to make this a lot smaller, like maybe like three percent, two percent. So the big thing now is that we really need to composite this into the wall. So make sure this layer is selected. Go up to Effect Color Correction Curves, and we need to match up this bullet hit to the color correction of this scene. So what we'll do is I'll kind of bring up the shadows by a little bit since I know there's no you know pure blacks in my footage, so that'll kind of help. And we'll go to the red channel. And we really just need to start mixing this together. So maybe we'll do like a quick little S curve, which kind of adds a little bit more blues in here. Maybe pops the oranges out as well. So we got a nice little S curve in there. Go to the greens, 
kind of you may bring this up by a touch, go maybe to the blues, and you know, kind of help sell this effect just a little bit more. So we take this off, you know, it's still not clearly in there. What we need to do is go back to the RGB and just kind of bring down the highlights by a little bit to kind of do that. So, you know, it's looking pretty good right now. And then let's go up to effect. Then let's go up to effect blur, Gaussian blur. And let's go ahead and just really increase this by, you know, maybe like five or so repeat edge pixels. And only reason why we're adding a Gaussian blur is because this shouldn't be 100% in focus. Maybe we'll set it up to like 10 or so. Then let's go up to effect color correction tint. Then let's go into the remap to white and make this just a little bit, you know, darker. Maybe like do a medium gray. It looks like a legitimate bullet hole. Maybe we'll go to mount the tint and kind of bring this down to like 60% or so. You know, and then maybe we can bring like the curves down underneath everything. What we need to do is add some of the debris falling off from the wall. So what we can do is go back into our projects here. So we have some nice, you know, stock wall hits here. Maybe we'll go grab like this one right here. Let's see what this does. And that looks like some nice, you know, debris falling out of the wall. Now it's perfect for this shot. So let's go into back into our composition and drag this right on top of our dry hit wall and bring this to the front of our actual bullet hit. And in this case, we'll, you know, toggle switch the modes, go to the blending mode and set this to screen. And we can scrub through here real fast. And maybe we'll bring this over by one frame. Let's go ahead and composite this right on top of our bullet hit. You know, of course, remember to scale this down. And we'll put this right here. And we'll scrub through here, see what we got. Okay, looking good. And that's what we got. So, and of course, this kind of falls off a little bit too slow for my taste. So what we can do is right-click the layer, go to time, time stretch. And we can set this down to 50. And this will kind of speed up the shot by a little bit. So a hit, and then it'll fall down very easily. So now we got to make this blend well with our footage. So let's go up to effect, color correction, curves. And first things first, let's play with some of the actual, you know, colors in here. So maybe we'll just bring this down by a touch. And you know what? That looks pretty close to what we can go with right off the start. Um, I got to say it looks good. Maybe we'll go into the green channel and see what we can do. Maybe we can, you know, bring it down as a touch. I think it looks good. Then let's go to effect, blur, Gaussian blur. And let's kind of just blur this in here just by a touch. Where's Gaussian Blur? There you are, Gaussian Blur. So it's like four. And uh, so it won't be 100% perfect, and I like that. Blends really well. And maybe we'll go to Effect, Color Correction, Brightness, and Contrast, and try to bring down the brightness by a little bit, just so it's not 100% you know, bright in there. And maybe we can increase the contrast by a touch. Maybe just not so much brightness. Cool. And then let's go to Effect, Color Correction, uh, Tint. And we'll set this down to like, you know, maybe 20%. And maybe we can come here and just brighten you know, green, blue like this, and maybe just punch it up by a touch, maybe go to like 47%, and that blends in there nicely. And of course, I just added another, you know, bullet hit back over here. And so far, we're looking good. We're basically almost done. I just want to add some of those shell casings, you know, pull, you know, popping out of these guns. So I'm going to go into our, you know, bullet casings over here, and if we come through here, you can see their video clips of a bullet kind of just floating here as a video clip, so that's great. Uh, we got a lot to work with here, and you got a, you know a bunch of different other bullets. You got a 308, you got a 762, which is probably what we'll use for this one, or a nine millimeter. We'll probably actually just use a nine millimeter. I think that works for me. And we'll come over here. We'll drag this clip into our timeline, and we'll just do like one shot only, so we don't have to get repetitive here. But we'll put this like right for her gun over here. So the bullet should pop out right when she fires her gun. So go ahead and center that up, and let's go ahead and scale this down. And let's go ahead and put this, you know, kind of right here. And maybe we'll do like a 8% for scale. Maybe 7%, 6%, maybe 5%. I don't know. We want to keep it small because it is kind of far away. And that should be okay. And so basically this will come in here. Okay, so and of course maybe what we'll do is just copy also the color corrections and kind of experiment and kind of really just make sure those are in there looking nice. Maybe we'll bring down the brightness and contrast. And you know what, that should be good. So now what we need to do is just hit P on keyboard for position. And I want to solo this layer with our plate footage. And add a keyframe for position. We're going to go forward just by a couple of frames. And this should like land right onto the ground like this. And maybe we'll do like a nice little arc in here. So maybe it'll kind of jump up like this. And what's going to happen is it's going to be very hard to see the bullet because it's really small, which is okay. But what's going to happen is this bullet comes flying out and it hits the ground. And I would turn on motion blur for this layer as well just so... We, you know, just so it kind of fly in there, it looks really good. And of course, you might want to, you know, extend the keyframes out just by a little bit more so you can kind of see the bullet flying just by a touch. Okay, so we're looking good. Let me unsolo these layers. 
And for the most part, we have the main principles of, you know, compositing this entire shot together. And here's a quick loop of the shot. And I know we only did a small portion of the shot, but uh, everything from here is basically just repeating every process that we've done. So you can continue to build out your shots and move forward in creating your own action sequence. Of course, once again, you can get these elements from actionvfx.com. That link will be in the description of the video. And that brings us to the end of our video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you have a good day.